Daniel Loomis Valenza began teaching at the University of New Hampshire in 1959 after receiving his degree from the American Crafters School in Rochester, New York in 1958. He taught at UNH for 40 years, retiring in 1999. During the mid-1960s, he began working on his master's thesis during summers at Rochester Institute of Technology, where he studied the origins of the chair, with a special emphasis on early Egyptian forms. We are especially pleased to have one of Dan's early carved leather sling chairs. He only made four for his thesis. And this one shows his interest in form and comfort. You can still see the geometry of the frame, and the thin lines and curves of the joints between the arms and backs are all hand-carved, pleasing to the eye and to the touch. And the leather seat suspends the sitter, minimizing the contact between the structural support and the sitter's body. While studying at RIT, Dan met Wendell Castle, a sculptor hired to teach furniture making and woodworking. Castle did not know formal furniture making techniques, so he brought with him a sculptor's approach to woodworking. Through Castle, Dan was introduced to lamination, wood glued together to create blocks which he could turn on a lathe or hand carve. And you can start to see this technique and anthropomorphic stylings for which Castle was known appear in Dan's work. This is most apparent in his Piggy series of jewelry chests and in a 20-piece series of tabletop objects he designed in the late 60s to be produced in El Salvador, including this liquor chest. You can see the different layers of wood, which makes a beautiful pattern, and these handles which could be viewed as stems or horn. Notice how thick the walls are and how solid the piece is. It's heavy too. This isn't a portable liquor cabinet by any means. Hand carving blocks of wood, or direct carving, has its roots in 20th century modernism. Direct carving allowed sculptors to adhere to the materials, not the process, and be responsive to their nature or the material truth while carving them. Dan left the form of this stump stool intact, but look at the surface marks he's made with his rasp. Notice the texture he applied to animate the surface of a piece that seems to have been plucked out of the woods. There is another connection between early 20th century direct carving sculptors and the studio craft movement. Modern sculptors professed a preference for locally sourced stone. This respect and intimate knowledge of local materials shows up in the mid-century studio craft movement, from ceramicists who sourced their own clay, to craftsmen such as Dan, who claimed wood from his own lot, and from neighbors who were taking down trees or blown down in storms, and who often had a personal attachment to the wood used in his work. You can see Dan referencing the use of found wood in his wood pile series table. While the top is made from exotic lumber purchased from a co-worker who had traveled abroad, the base and stump are not. The stump barely looks worked, and the base visually refers to the scraps of lumber that accumulates in every wood shop. This table was one of the last pieces Dan made that was featured in a national furniture show. In a 1979 New York Times review of new handmade furniture at the American Craft Museum, Rita Reif describes it sarcastically as the bolted stack of planks that Daniel Loomis Valenza calls a table. In addition to the influence of modern sculptors' direct carving techniques, Dan, who has a great sense of humor and keen intellect, was interested in pop art and conceptual art. 
He begins in the late 1960s to stain and paint his work and creates photorealistic pieces such as this Kodak box and lens box, which is actually a working chest of drawers. He mentions Andy Warhol as an inspiration and he becomes much more experimental, turning to assemblage and incorporating new materials into his work. He said, I lost my preciousness in the 1970s, and you can see that in his multimedia approach. As Dan moved away from functional furniture, he devoted his time to teaching and other creative pursuits, such as building several post and beam houses, including his own, and spending nearly a decade concentrating on tying fishing flies. When he did exhibit his work, he demonstrated an acute awareness of what was happening in the art world. And pieces such as Our Green World, first arranged in 1989, presents a complex assemblage of household objects, plastic bottles, toys, and broken glass that shows him expressing his environmental concerns while responding to engaging with contemporary artistic ideas. Dan continues to find new uses and configurations for natural materials and discarded items fashioning small gatherings of rusty metal, as he calls it, at his home. He may have slowed, but his artistic impulse to make sculpture is strong and evident throughout his property. While celebrated as a talented studio furniture maker, Dan's most significant accomplishments may be the inspired and creative life he built for himself and his family and the curiosity he nurtured in his students.